Hello. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is uh, Commissioner Keith Sonderling from the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. The EEOC is the premier civil rights uh, law enforcement agency in the country. We enforce laws related to all workplace discrimination. So when you say, think of the Me Too movement, uh, pay equity, any kind of discrimination, that's us. So you're probably wondering you know, why am I at an artificial intelligence conference with you know, a lot of very, very smart people. Well, um, whether you are aware of it or not, AI is playing a very, very large role in HR. But I want to talk about that today and talk about some of the legal implications and pose some questions for you on how we can actually link design these products to comply with our amongst the other civil rights laws. So I first want to start with what you're probably thinking of when I say AI in the workplace, and that's this dystopian future of robot armies replacing human workers. And you're being peppered with all these studies across the board about how AI is coming to replace humans. You know, the World Economic Forum predicts in the next four years, 85 million jobs might be displaced by artificial intelligence. And you know, there's an interesting study done by the Brookings Institute that looked at the job descriptions from the Department of Labor's database. And in that database, there's around 769 job categories. 740 of them have some near-term risk of automation. And you know, with everything going on in the, in the job force and the labor market, we're seeing companies really move towards replacing humans with robots. Robot orders were up almost 40% last year. And there's a study out there that's showing how cheap it might be for companies to replace humans with robots, that it may only cost companies around $10,000 a year to replace two to four humans. So, you know, that's one way to look at what's going on with AI and robotics in the workplace, but others are looking at it as a good thing. You know, now with so many jobs being replaced by robots and AI, it's opportunities and opportunities to upskill and reskill the 97 million new jobs that may emerge with the division of robots and humans. So from the standpoint of that and that is coming, I don't think there's much we can do to stop that, but that's actually not what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about an issue that's happening right now, and that's AI being used in the workplace and how AI can both discriminate and prevent discrimination at the same time. So HR departments today, like any other lines of business, have a lot of data about individual employees. But you know, they need to actually do something with this data. And AI is promising to make all this data um, legible for HR departments. And for those who are using HR technologies, um, it's increasing every single year. HR tech spending last year alone was around $17 billion. And that's going to increase at a compound rate of 12% every year. And a lot of this obviously was pushed by the pandemic with companies going to virtual um, recruiting at a fast rate. And 86% of companies say, long after the pandemic is over, they're still going to do some sort of virtual recruiting. So to the millions of people who lost their job or resigned from their job in the great, great nation or the great, great hire, whether you're aware of it or not, AI has played a significant role in that. So AI is involved in all stages of the job life cycle. It writes job descriptions, it screens resumes, it chats with applicants, it conducts job interviews, and then there's software out there that will predict if that employee, potential employee will take a job, how much they'll take the job for. And then there's some even other crazier software that, that will tell you how that employee will interact with their coworkers. AI can identify employees' current skills and potential skills. It can track productivity, it can assess workers, and it picks who gets those valuable upskilling and reskilling opportunities, which is all the buzzword. This is a big buzzword in corporate HR these days. Nowadays, there's some algorithms that will tell an employee that they're fired if they fall short of their expectations. So again, this is not some futuristic discussion that for each of these products I mentioned, there's, there, for each of these tools I mentioned, there's many products available right now. So what is the issue here when it relates to replacing AI, using AI to replace HR? You know, as we're seeing it, this confidence is uh, proof positive of, there's a lot of uses of AI going on. AI is making companies more money, it's doing things more efficiently, and helping businesses more effectively as well. But when it comes to using 
AI and VHR, you know, the thought of it is when it's being developed is that how can we use AI to eliminate bias, right? And what is the cost of the bias in human resources? And that's the human, right? So let's use AI to replace the human. But when you're dealing with that, you're dealing with some of the most fundamental civil rights laws in this country. And that's the ability to enter the workplace and to thrive in the workplace. So what I believe, though, that AI was carefully um, designed and properly used, those are the buzzwords, carefully designed and properly used, it does have the potential to advance diversity, inclusion, accessibility by mitigating the risk of unlawful discrimination. Now, you've all heard many studies about bias in the workplace. It's one of the main reasons my agency exists. You know, for example, there's many studies that show a male and female resume being submitted to a company. The male is more likely to be picked than the female, even if their skills are the same. There's other studies that show that African Americans and Asian Americans who whiten their resume, and what I mean by that, that's deleting any kind of racial references, whether it's clubs or associations, you're more likely to get picked if those references are not there than if they are there. So there's a lot of problems um, with bias in recruiting and hiring. And the bigger problem is that oftentimes HR professionals do not become aware of discriminatory conduct by their staff, by their hiring managers, until it is too late. But AI can help eliminate bias from the earliest stages of the decision making process. For example, an AI enabled resume screening program can be taught to disregard variables that have nothing to do um, with the job applicant's ability to perform the job. So think about the most classic example of somebody's name. What does a name? tell you about that, that employee's ability to perform the job. Nothing, right? But what it does tell you is potentially things you're not allowed to make an employment decision on, such as their applicant sex, national origin, religion, or race, just by seeing their name. Likewise, an ai enabled program that conducts preliminary job screening interviews can be taught an engineer to disregard these factors that are legal to make an employment decision on, such as age, sex, race, disability, or pregnancy. It can even be taught to disregard factors that merely suggest a candidate's membership in a protected class, including, which we'll give you examples of later, foreign accents or speech impairments. And in some cases, replacing uh, an AI-enabled uh, tool with a human can just eliminate some of the earliest intentional discrimination we've seen. So think about it, it's not unheard of for uh, an, an interviewer when they're where they meet somebody in an interview work to make a decision on things they're not supposed to. So if you see somebody in an interview, what do you see? You see a lot of things you're not allowed to make a decision on for them, such as you know, what they look like, um, their, the color of their skin, if they're pregnant, if they're disabled. But using AI to do those initial screening stages can completely remove that bias, right? So let's say if somebody sees that a potential worker is pregnant or disabled, in their head, they may think to themselves, how much is this employee going to cost me? She's pregnant. She's going to want to take leave when the baby comes. Or this person's disabled. They're going to need this $1,000 keyboard, which is going to cost me a lot of money, which I have to accommodate. Well, I'm just going to go with somebody else who has equal qualifications and will never know why. And you know that is obviously very illegal, but AI can actually eliminate that discrimination from stages of the hiring process. So a lot of good, but at the same time, I'm going to flip what I said earlier, if AI is poorly designed and carelessly implemented, it can discriminate on a scale far greater than any individual HR professional. That's because, as you all know, AI is only as good as the quality of the data that's being fed to it. And the predictions which AI makes, whether it's in in any area that's being discussed today, and especially in HR, it's only, go, it's only as sound as the training data on which the algorithms rely. So for example, if you're using an algorithm, algorithm that relies on the characteristics of the current workforce, what's going to happen? If you're going to use that current workforce to model the ideal applicant, you may unintentionally replicate the status quo. So if the current workforce is made up primarily of employees of one race, one gender, or one national origin, the algorithm is going to automatically screen out applicants who do not share those same characteristics. 
And case in point, my favorite uh, example, which is just an infamous story at this point, one of these companies went to these uh, resume screening AI enable program, and vendor, and they, uh, that vendor was selling these programs, as a lot of these are, for diversifying your workforce for diversity and inclusion. And they say, here are my best workers. Use machine learning and AI to find out what patterns make these employees so successful. And then go find me more of those, right? Sounds like a good use of AI. So, employing that measure, this resume screening program came back and said the most likely indicators of success at this particular firm was being named Jared, having played high school across. So, so much for using this program for diversity, equity, and inclusion, but you all know what the problems were there. So, like I said, a lot. A lot of these programs are being sold in that way to diversify your workforce to eliminate your bias. And I now need to give you, and I know uh, we're in Las Vegas, it's the last place you ever want to have a, a law school lesson, but I need to just give you a quick law school lesson before I get into some actual use cases of artificial intelligence. So under our theory, under our laws, there's essentially two theories of discrimination. And to make it simple, think intentional or unintentional. But what really matters is that liability is in our laws, it's the same whether or not you intend to discriminate. So the most easiest example of um, intentional discrimination is I see a resume, this is this person's uh, older, or this person's a female, and I just put the resume in the trash. That's intentional discrimination. Unintentional discrimination is a little more complicated. And, and the classic law school textbook example of this is that an employer wants to um, hire workers who come to work on time. That's the most important qualification for this company, and then we want you to be on work all the time. So they're only going to hire from people who live in certain zip codes next to the office, right? It sounds fair because it's no excuse to be late. But if those zip codes are predominantly of people of one race, color, national origin, or religion, and that policy is the uh, well, then screen out people who do not meet those characteristics solely based on the zip code. And although the employer did not want to discriminate there, the policy has that effect. And what's so key is that the employers are liable either way. And before we get to the actual use cases of AI using these theories, it's so important, like everything else, about the data being fed to the algorithms. And especially in HR, data is everything now. And what I'm trying to raise awareness of, normally in HR data makes the decisions between good hire or bad hire, or bad promotion or good promotion. But here, when it comes to AI, I'm trying to raise awareness of is the difference now between a lawful and an unlawful decision. So, you know, but AI then can actually correct for that black box problem. You think about how people make important decisions now, it's in somebody's head, and we don't really know how they got to that decision. As I said, AI can be designed to mask for race, gender, age, disability, or other characteristics. It can exclude indications that you're associated with some protected classes, such as people's names, the people's sports team, someone's graduation date. Um, it can help employers take that skills-based approach. It can help employers remove that confidence gap that leads women to under-report their abilities and men to overstate theirs. But at the same time, it can replicate and amplify existing bias when it isn't properly designed. So, as promised, I will give you examples using AI. And on, under the intent, unintentional theory of discrimination, um, the, the, the best example is one that uh, Amazon did between 2015 and 2017. And a lot of you may know this one because it's used broadly in AI um, related to discrimination. And there, they um, fed the algorithm, the data set consisting of resumes that have been submitted to a position in the prior um, five to ten years, and they asked machine learning to go through the patterns of um, what makes those employees, uh, that those applicants good, what, what characteristics they want. So the machine learning went through. And rated them between one to five. And the results of that, obviously, um, as a lot of you know, is that if you had any associational characteristics being related to women, such as women's sports teams, women's clubs, or the names of women's colleges, you were automatically ranked lower. Now, this was not proof of misogynistic intent on behalf of the AI. The AI was a function of the data fed to the AI in the first place. But in, in that case, you know, they would have still been liable for gender discrimination based on. And what's not talked about as much is using AI to intentionally discriminate. And you may say, Keith, how is that possible? You just told us that AI has no life of its own, it's only relying on data. But it can be used to intentionally discriminate. And you know, there's not many cases in this area because it's still new, but the 
The most relevant case to using AI to potentially discriminate is a um, case of the ACLU actually brought against Facebook and some other companies. There, it was alleged that uh, employers can go and use Facebook's advertising practices, um, like you can advertise anything on Facebook by actually micro targeting and saying, I want to show this product to people who are between 20 and 25 years old, who went to college, uh, who are this religion. Well, using it for employment opportunities is a much different story, and that's what was the allegations in that case that it was being limited based upon age um, to show employment opportunities. Uh, quickly after the lawsuit was filed, Facebook took down that advertising portal and said they would have different advertising rules for advertising job opportunities. And why is this so significant in, in this manner that happened in this case? It goes even further than the pre civil rights era of actually telling people. Not to apply. We've all seen those black and white photos of saying you're this race, religion, or national origin. Don't apply. Here it withholds the very existence of the job opportunity from candidates on the basis of their actual protected characteristics. So at least in those older examples, you knew exactly that you were being discriminated against because of your religion, because of your color, because of your national origin. Here you don't even know that exists, and it's impossible to exercise your civil rights laws to be able to apply it into the workforce if that AI is being taken away from you um, because of that. So those are just two very basic theories of how artificial intelligence can um, discriminate both on the, on the, because of the data set, because of the biased data set, or actually using AI to go in and screen out on certain protected characteristics, resumes or candidates on a large scale. And there's so many more examples I can give you of this, but I ask to you in my remaining a uh, couple of minutes, and I will take any questions if you have some, is that you know, from our perspective in Washington, D.C., and we're not, I'm a labor and employment lawyer, not a technical expert. We really need all of your help to make sure that these products are being designed with our long-standing civil rights laws in mind. Because if you heard, and there's many more benefits that you can go through, that AI can really help eliminate bias in its proper design. But if it, it is not proper design or it's improperly used, it can discriminate larger and greater than we've ever seen before. So we're really at a crossroads here where we need everyone's help, from the vendors who are actually designing these products, to the companies who are buying these products, and to the workers who are being subjected to these um, decisions made by AI. We all have to come together to make sure that they're designed in accordance with the most basic civil rights that we're all afforded, and that's the enter in the right of the workplace. And that's our, that's our mission, that's what we're working on, and I'd uh, love to have that continue that conversation. So thank you for your time. Okay, we have time for one, maybe two questions. Right in this corner. Uh, thanks. Uh, I'm curious what your perspective is on screening in versus screening out, especially with an AI uh, helping prioritize talent for the recruitment cycle, right? So I think that's a big crutch that a lot of the vendors use today, and I still feel like they may have no recruiters vision in this space. Yeah, and so that's related to a, a, a potentially really good use of AI, and that's diversifying the pools. Um, and actually using AI to bring people into the application because we normally would not see those job advertisements. You know, obviously everything's online now that may not actually go to those companies' websites or that would not have um, the access to see that those jobs exist. So AI can be very beneficial in the sense where it can actually get go search the internet, search um, postings and define ideal characteristics, not only for based on skills, but based on companies' lawful reasons to want to help diversify their workforce, as you know, there's many studies that show a more diverse workforce makes companies more money and get better products for um, both designing and to sell to the public. So AI can be used now. At, at the same time, it can be very tricky that you can't have the AI make those decisions based upon those person's characteristics. So, Diversifying your using AI to diversify your workforce pool and to get the, the job boards out there to different diverse locations that AI can really help scale is a good thing. But again, at the end of the day, we can't we can't use it to make an employment decision based on the